Hey, and welcome back, friends. And if you're new here, a high five for you. Welcome. We're glad to have you. I'm Travis. And I'm Adele. And we're with The Noble Marriage. We're here to serve your marriage through authentic, God-centered conversation that's going to point you back to Jesus and hopefully impact and inspire you to be your best self inside your marriage. Our prayer is through our ministry, your marriage will be impacted with true love and intimacy. So thank you again for joining us today. Hey, and welcome back to our video series with Dr. Gary Chapman, author of The Five Love Languages. This is video number five. So if you have not seen one through four, be sure and go back and digest all of that amazing conversation that we have in the first four videos. I think it's really cool that it's video number five and it's the five love languages we're talking about here. Right? How cool is that? <laughs> so let's listen to what he says. Okay, so where did the five love languages come from? The five love languages grew out of my counseling. Mm -hmm. uh, I remember the first time I encountered this concept that what makes one person feel loved doesn't make another person feel loved. Mm -hmm. uh, there was a couple, I didn't know them, uh, just met them, found out they'd been married to each other for 30 years, mm -hmm. and they sat down and uh, she said, well, let me just tell you, Dr. Chapman, before we start a little bit about us, she said, we don't argue. We don't believe in arguing. We don't have any money problems. And she went on with two or three more positive things. And I was beginning to wonder, or did they come in here to tell me what a good marriage they have? <laughs> right. <laughs> but then she started crying. And she said, but the problem is, I just don't feel any love coming from him. Mm. We're like two roommates living in the same house. He does his thing, I do my thing. Mm -hmm. There's nothing going on between us. And I feel so empty inside. Mm -hmm. And I don't know how long I can go on like this. And I looked at him and he said, I don't understand her. I do everything I can to show her that I love her. And she sits there and tells you what she's been telling me. She doesn't feel loved. Mm -hmm. He said, I don't know what else to do. And I said, what do you do to show love to her? He said, well, I get home from work before she does, and I start the evening meal. Sometimes I actually have it ready when she, she walks in the door. If not, she'll help me. And then we eat. And after we eat, I wash the dishes. And on Thursday night, I vacuum the floors. On Saturday, I wash the car. I mow the grass. I help her with the laundry. And he went on, and I was beginning to wonder, what does this woman do? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it sounded to me like he was doing everything. Yeah. yeah. And he said, and she still says she doesn't feel loved. He said, I don't know what else to do. I looked back at her and she said, Dr. Chapman, he's right. He's a hardworking man, but we don't ever talk. Hmm. We haven't talked in 20 years. He's always mowing the grass, washing the dishes, all that. <laughs> always doing something. <laughs> and I realized here was a sincere husband yeah. who was loving his wife the best way he knew how and a wife who didn't get it. And after that, I heard similar stories over and over. And I knew there had to be a pattern to it. Mm -hmm. So eventually what I did was to read several years of notes that I made and ask myself, when someone said, I feel like my spouse doesn't love me, what did they want? Mm -hmm. What were they complaining about? Mm -hmm. And their answers fell into five categories. And I later called them the five love languages. Wow. And I started using it in my counseling. That if you want her to feel love, you've got to express love in her language. And if you want him to feel love, you've got to speak his language. And I would help them discover each other's language, challenge them to go home and try it. And sometimes they would come back in three weeks and say, Gary, this is changing everything. Mm -hmm. the, the whole climate's different now. Mm -hmm. And then I started using it with small groups. And the same thing would happen. It was probably five years later when I thought, you know, if I could put this concept in a book and write it in the language of the common person, leave out psychological jargon and all that, maybe I could help a lot of couples that I would never have time to see in my office. Mm -hmm. Little did I know the book would sell now over 20 million copies, <laughs> yes. published over 50 languages around the world. Wow. People ask me, how do I explain that? I said, the short answer is God. Yeah. And the long answer is God. Yeah. I think on the human level, what happens, couples read it, 
They take the quiz. They discover their love language. Mm -hmm. They begin to speak it. Their love tank begins to fill up. Mm -hmm. And then they want their brother and his wife to read it. And it just goes word of mouth all over the world. So it's a God thing. I think the five love languages literally changed relationships in a way that had never been done before. Because I can relate in our relationship, he's acts of service and words of affirmation, and I'm physical touch and quality time. Yeah. And there was a huge gap there yeah. for years and years and years. So. Yeah, and I like how, thanks for sharing that, and I also like how your book is impacting a secular world. Yes. Yeah. Like, uh, it's impacting people that they're they're not necessarily looking for a spiritual book, and they get something that's going to speak some really good truth to them. Yeah, and that's so impactful that's hard to to do. Well, we wrote that. I wrote that book uh, with that in mind. I was really writing to non Christians. Okay, so that story he talked about with that couple who'd been married thirty years. Was he talking about us? It's exactly what I thought he was talking about because I thought that I did all these acts of service in the house, like I cleaned the dishes, cleaned the car, cleaned the house, pick up your shoes, close all your cabinet doors. Make the bed. Vacuum. Make the bed, vacuum. I did Mow all the these yard. Yeah, I did all these chores and household things and acts of service and you could care less. And yeah. it affected my second one, which is I was expecting you to say, what a great job you're doing, Travis. I really appreciate you washing the dishes and washing my clothes and washing my car and keeping the grass cut. And that never came. And I was like, she is so ungrateful and so unloving to me. I bet. I bet you thought I was so ungrateful. I did. I was like, man, what is wrong with this woman? And I was in a place of, he just doesn't see me. He doesn't see Mm. what I need because it's not doing all those things. It's, I want closeness, connection, conversation, time, and physical touch. And because I like, I had to chuckle when he's talking about like, he's too busy doing X, Y, Z that, you know, she's left feeling a certain way about that. And that's exactly how I felt. You're like, why can't you come sit with me? Yeah. Why can't you come hang out with me and talk to me? Listen, we would be in the middle of watching movies, and we still, unfortunately, still this happens, in the middle of watching a movie, and for it's some so reason, annoying! for some reason, I think it's the appropriate time to pause it and get up and clean the house. No, like in the worst spot too. He'll be like, "Oh, this is a really great scene. Let's just pause it right there." And I'm like, "Time to go wash the dishes, you leave me clean hanging. up the house." What in the world? It's just what comes up for me is that's what needs to be done is is cleaning up and acts of service. And it really bothers me that you're like, no, come, come sit with me. Let's watch yeah. this movie together. Let's like, snuggle. It can wait and, until the end. I think there's completely like, separate love languages. Yeah. I think there's like, you have an internal clock going on a certain time that things should be done in. And I don't have that internal clock. You don't. <laughs> I'm like, I'll get to it when I'm ready. And it's not during a movie. Mm -mm. So, yeah, we really relate to that couple. And just, I'm so grateful for Dr. Chapman and him taking the time to notice, like, there could be a pattern here. Like, uh, let me go back and read years worth of notes. So you say five years worth of notes that he had been taking on couples. And he started to notice there's a pattern here. And specifically with that couple, he could see the disconnect of why they didn't feel love from each other. And I remember, like, I felt so bad about myself in the fact that I didn't really love the things you were doing around the house. Kind of like what's wrong with you for not loving me for those? Yeah, like I felt really bad about being that way. And I just, I didn't realize that the reason you were doing it is because that's the love language that you speak. I just thought that you would rather be doing it. And so it just kind of left me feeling uneasy about me not loving those things, right? And... Mm. I I just desired a totally different connection. And I remember having so many conversations where I would be like, 
can we hire somebody to do the yard? Because it literally takes you a whole Saturday and then I don't get to see you. And you feeling like some sort of way about that I want to outsource it because I'm trying to figure out how can I spend more time with you? And so that that disconnect there was really tough for us to I had to work through. through that in my own self because that is an act of service. You know, going out in the yard and cleaning it and cleaning the house is an act of service that I feel like I should be doing. Mm-hmm. Um, and if I really want love from you and it, you're doing housework, oh man, it makes me feel loved. And so whenever it came to like outsourcing that, it took me a while to work through that. And it's, I'm glad I did. Yeah. It was been amazing to outsource the yard. Yeah. Because ultimately, like, we we do prioritize the time that time we have important. together. And what we do during that time is also important. And so we figured out that on a scale of importance, the housework just wasn't as high yeah. on that list. That right. that was something that we could outsource, which really helped us. So I'm curious, have you read his book, The Five Love Languages? If you haven't, you're definitely going to want to read that book. And I'll also attach a link below for you to take the quiz to find out what is your love language. I think a lot of times we can figure it out without even reading the book because it it does make sense. Words of affirmation means words of high value for you. Like you can just figure them out. But there's so much more detail involved in it, which is why there's a book about it. And so you really should go go read that book and take the quiz and then you know for sure, you know, what your love language is. And then you can figure out what is that gap between us and how can we close that gap and speak each other's love language so that we both feel love in the relationship. It's important to, to feel love. I mean, it makes the marriage more cohesive and happy and joyful when both couples are feeling loved. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm curious what your love language is. You know, if you'll put that down in the comments and your spouse's love language and if you guys are meeting those. Yeah, I'd love to hear from all of our audience as well. So in the next video with Dr. Gary Chapman, we're going to talk about how our parents influenced our love language and also like what characteristics did we bring from our parents example into our own relationship so you're gonna want to check out tomorrow's video to hear all about that we'll see you then bye hey and welcome (laughs) i was gonna talk at the same time go ahead You're not finished yet. We're here to make a difference and inspire your marriage and other marriages as well. And if you found value in these videos, leave us a comment and let us know what that was so we can make other videos similar to that. We would love for you to join our community of awesome, like-minded people. They are awesome. Go ahead and hit subscribe and you'll get daily motivational videos that impact your life and inspire you to be your best self. This also helps us get our message out to marriages all over the world. So thank you so much for subscribing and joining our community.